you know, I want to take this opportunity just to welcome uh, some of our partners who we do not usually interact with. I know, you know, we have we had some presentations from Japan uh, this morning. We have had uh, Aina from Iceland with us uh, from the beginning. Just want to um, recognize you, Aina. Um, Aina is one of our partners. We have been working with him for several years now. So uh, welcome. I know others might have left, but you know, just want to recognize our colleagues from Japan who have been working with us consistently over the past, uh, well, even before the CRFM was established. And we have always had collaborative projects funded by the government of Japan. OK, um, so we're talking about regional uh, cooperation now among uh, the three main regional fisheries bodies active in the region. Of course, there are more fisheries, regional fisheries bodies, but the uh, ones we're going to focus on are CRFM of Pesca and um, Wake of Sea. Um, in fisheries and in managing and uh, having good governance framework and arrangements and achieving long-term sustainable use, of our living marine resources and protecting our marine ecosystem uh, requires regional cooperation, cooperation, regional or international uh, cooperation, fundamental. In fact, we have been touching on many of the um, reasons, very compelling reasons why we have to work uh, uh, together as countries and as regional organizations to address the problem because they are common problems. <laughs> We're dealing with a common ecosystem, usually referred to as the large marine ecosystem concept. The Caribbean Sea at the end of the day is a classical semi-enclosed sea. And uh, the, the uh, definition and the obligations with respect to uh, managing the marine resources and the environment in a semi-enclosed sea is set out in Article 123 of UNCLOS. And of course, the, the fish stocks that we're dealing with are shared stocks. <laughs> uh, they're shared, transboundary, some are straddling, some are highly migratory. Um, but in various forms, they are shared. And at the end of the day, we must coordinate and cooperate in order to be effective in achieving sustainable fisheries and preventing overexploitation and abuse. So it is a legal obligation as well as a common sense approach based on the, 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 the ecology <laughs> and biology <laughs> of the um, species that we're dealing with. But in addition, the issue of capacity uh, that that um, Lorna just mentioned is also critical um, within the region. Our countries, you know, few of us, if any, of our countries, um, have the capacity to do the things that we need to do, um, human or institutional capacity. So it just makes sense for us to work together. And so, for all these reasons. And given the numerous, uh, very difficult challenges that we face, it is essential for us to work together to achieve our objectives and to ensure that the people of the region can have um, long-term sustainable uh, benefits from the fishery resources. So we have been working with a number of partners to address our priorities and achieve our goal. Nothing that we have done, nothing we have achieved <laughs> um, is due just to our efforts. Um, at the end of the day, uh, organization like CRFM, um, we succeed to the extent that we are able to engage with others. Whether it's Fisher Folk, as we were looking at the ground level in the previous um, excellent presentation by Mario, uh, or it's 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 at the the higher level, but um, partnership and collaboration is absolutely necessary, and this is how we work. 
So most, most if not all of our projects and initiatives um, involve uh, collaboration with other organizations with an interest in the area. And so we work with a range of organizations from international, regional, academic, research, NGOs, private sector, et cetera. And, you have, and, and many have been participating in this um, conference since we, since we started a few days ago. Now, we have three main regional fisheries bodies operating in the region. Um, Wake of Sea, which was established in 1973 with 34 members. It's a, a UN organization, FAO, under, under, under FAO. Then we have OSPESCA, which is the Central American equivalent of CRFM. And they were established in 1995 and comprised of states. Then we have the CRFM uh, established in 2002-2003 with 17, um, uh, 17 member states. OSPESCA and uh, uh, CRFM comprise of approximately 70% of the membership of um, Wake Up Sea. And you know, that is significant because we have seen include not only uh, the, the developing countries in the region, um, but also um, some big players like the EU, United States, uh, Korea, South Korea, etc., um, plus others. And so, and so um, if we can, as PESCA, CRFM can work together, um, 70% of the members, membership of WCAC, we can be quite influential there. All right. Now, in addition to uh, WCAC, uh, CRFM, uh, and OSPESCA, and, and the CRFM, we have partnership with several other organizations. You know, partnership is uh, the, the, the big overarching uh, theme here and, and cooperation. So just briefly mentioning, uh, these that you are seeing now on the screen, we have formal agreements with these academic institutions, regional organizations, etc., research institutes, etc. Right. But our focus is on the um, CRFM OSPESCA uh, and Wake Up C collaboration. Now, CRFM and OSPESCA, um, over the past uh, 13 years, we have been gradually strengthening our collaboration. Excuse me a minute there. We have been gradually strengthening our collaboration. We had our first joint ministerial meeting uh, in September of 2012, and we had a second high-level ministerial meeting in um, November of 2019. And this produced uh, a couple of important uh, policy documents, ministerial declaration and cooperation in fisheries and aquaculture development in the region, a memorandum of understanding between the two organizations and a joint action plan. Um, at the second meeting, we updated the um, joint action plan and uh, a second declaration was, was issued. Now, some of the priority areas in the joint action plan are IUU, climate change, blue growth, and species of common interest, such as lobster conch, uh, uh, pelagic lionfish. Um, what we have really is our commitment to work on areas of common interest and issues of common interest and species of common interest um, in order to uh, ensure sustainable use, proper development, and that our countries optimize uh, benefits from the resources through expanded trade uh, and that our uh, fishers and communities that depend on our fishery resources are able to optimize uh, benefits. So, so we have been working with uh, OSPESCA um, and uh, behind us supporting us in this collaboration is Wake Up Sea. Wake Up Sea has been very closely involved in the strengthening of that partnership and also the partnership extends to collaboration with Wake Up Sea on just about all the matters um, and activities initiatives uh, that we're that we're working on. <clears throat> now uh, there was also a significant development in 2016 under the uh, CLME Plus project 
uh, when uh, a formal memorandum of uh, understanding was signed uh, between the three regional fisheries bodies, CRFM, OSPESCA, and, uh, and WACFC. And the purpose of this was just to facilitate uh, further and closer consultation and coordination, planning exchange of information, and developing and implementing joint projects and programs and coordinating workshops and, and so on, so that we can realize synergies and add value to um, what we're doing. Uh, um, we have had 13 coordination meetings uh, between the heads of uh, SPESCA, CRFM, and WACAFC since the uh, MOU was established, and uh, which was, was the end of 2016. So from 2017, uh, up until up until now, you know, we haven't had a meeting this year, but the last one was held last year. Um, so, so we have seen significant partnership and collaboration uh, uh, on just about all the major uh, priorities and activities that we have been implementing. You know, we work very closely, and I just wanted to highlight using this slide um, the the. Uh, how we have um, been learning from each other, helping each other. So in 2010, we developed the, the, the Castries Declaration. <laughs> uh, and this inspired uh, OSPESCA to develop their own uh, similar declaration dealing with IUU fishing. And actually, this also uh, inspired and led to the establishment of the um, Wake Up City, the wider regional working group on IUU fishing and the action plan, the larger regional wake up the action plan to combat IUU fishing. And in a similar manner, OSPESCA developed a, a lobster uh, policy, they call it lobster reg regulation, um, and this actually inspired the development of the lobster management agreement that was mentioned by Lester and others um, earlier on this morning. <coughs> and, and, and our declaration actually made specific reference to the uh, role and the inspiration we got from OSPESCA in doing this. So, so, so we are, we are, we are coordinating, collaborating, but we're also learning from each other, which is very, very important. Now, the key, uh, actually one of the foundation of our collaboration as a, as three regional fishing body are the joint working groups and they're listed here. And this, I think these are some of them we can see dealing with fine fish, uh, dolphin fish, spinal lobster, and some of these have been mentioned earlier this morning. So there are a number of um, working groups that are active, some more, more active than others, um, but are working addressing many different uh, thematic areas in the region. So in concluding, um, we have been working in partnership and this is a very these are very valuable uh, partnerships coordinating uh, and, uh, and and supporting helping each other so a lot of activities now are, are joint activities so product development you know we worked to develop the CLME project the CLME plus project the BCLME plus project and also collaborated and, and worked toward the development of the Pro Career plus project we have had numerous workshop studies uh, working group and other activities that we have done together. So as we reflect on the past 20 years, we have come a very long way. We have made significant strides in building key strategic alliances and partnerships. And these have yielded significant tangible benefits for our country and our organization. We are much stronger because of these partnerships. But as we think about the future uh, um, and the future that we really want, which are sustainable, resilient, productive fisheries, and where they where they are fully developed and used in ways that promote optimum economic benefit, food security, health and prosperity, livelihood, and the well-being of our people, a fundamental pillar going forward is enhanced cooperation, strong alliances, and vibrant partnership to overcome the many very difficult, daunting challenges we face on multiple fronts as small and developing states. But finally, I just want to say that as we move forward to strengthen and develop these and expand these partnerships, it is, it is very important that we do so in ways that neither compromise nor in any way diminish our sovereignty and sovereign rights over our valuable marine assets that our predecessors fought so hard 
and made such great sacrifices to secure for us and for our future generations, our children, our grandchildren. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Houghton, and a very nice note to end on. A caution as we look towards the future generation. All right, wonderful presentation. We really appreciate the work that's being done by the persons that um, are leading these agencies and leading to ensure their synergy and cooperation within the region. So thank you.